function on GitHub? Or has anyone not done it? I have attended like uh, probably last year or something, but uh, so yeah, I'm just here to see if I can understand anything really. So don't rely on me. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So it shouldn't be too boring, hopefully. Okay. So today we're going to be talking um, a little bit about branches on GitHub and how we go about merging those branches and generally what that sort of encompasses in terms of working with data and repositories and collaborating with other people. You may have to bear with the technological <laughs> issues <laughs> that may occasionally creep in. <laughs> so a quick refresh on Git and GitHub. So Git is basically a version control system that is run using the command line um, or in a shell, something like Git bash. Um, and it's very much open source and you know you can use it to keep track of changes, et cetera, but it's not GitHub. Um, and you cannot actually use GitHub without Git in the first place. So GitHub is more like a user-friendly interface um, and it's a cloud-based system so that you can store and track your work as well as sort of get those resources whenever you want um, online. And as I said, you can't use it without Git. So that's a very brief sort of introduction to that and a little sort of story I guess of one way you can think about the general GitHub process is like you're posting a letter so you've made your change in your document um, which is you writing a letter and then you've staged your change and staging that is like putting your letter in the envelope and then basically you commit that change which is like you making the commitment of putting that letter into the post box and then Postman Pat is going to come along and pick up that post and is going to keep a record of that as it goes through its journey. And basically GitHub keeps a record of your letter and all your data and the different changes you've made. And then eventually your collaborators can see the changes that you've made and also um, keep track of changes that they've made or other collaborators have made which is like this cute dog receiving the letter that I sent it. So I will then hand over to Claire, I think, for the next bit. Technological wonder. Yay. So <laughs> I have my control. I can control Megan's screen and go to the next slide, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. There's a bit of a lag. Um, but it should work. Come on then. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So branches. So if you've used... Um, GitHub before you probably know what it is, but basically when you create a repository with your work, you will be working from the default branch, which is called the main branch. So that's the name. Uh, the default name is main. And um, so that's created along with your repository. And that's the working version by default that you're going to be working with. But you can also create other branches. So if you're collaborating with people or if you want to try and do something um, a bit different, uh, something that you might do, you think that is not worth uh, editing the main work uh, right away. You can create a branch um, which will be based on that main branch, but then will uh, be um, updated uh, separately from that main branch. So you could be fixing bugs, developing new features, experimenting new ideas that you don't want to, you think are a bit risky maybe for the main work, or it's also very good for collaboration. So that's something that we're going to illustrate with Megan um, is the collaboration part. Um, so we're going to uh, have a live example. So if I sh now share my screen, I'm going to be creating a repo and inviting Megan onto that repo. So can any, everyone see my GitHub? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So. I'm going to, most of you probably know how to do this, but I'm going to create a new repository that I'm going to call Harug. And it's about branching and merging practice. And spell it. I'm going to choose a repo here. So I've got Harug that I've created, but it needs to be empty. This is an empty folder. And I'm going to initialize this with a readme file. 
which we're going to be working with, um, with Megan today. So we create it. So now this repository has been created on my GitHub desktop, but it's not on my online version. It's not in the cloud yet. So I'm going to publish it in the cloud and I'm going to make it public. So I can then, anyone can then see it and collaborate. Um, publish it. Oh, thanks. So now if I go onto my uh, online GitHub, it's set. So I'm going to open it and then I'm going to invite uh, Megan as a collaborator onto that uh, repo. So I'm going to the settings and there's on the left side a, co a column with collaborators. And then I can add people. At the moment, nobody's on it, but I'm going to be adding Megan. So Megan is here. I'm adding it. And then she should receive an email telling her that she's been invited. You're muted, Megan. <laughs> Did you want me to share my screen? Um, sure, yeah, so we can see what happens. Yeah, cool. So you can show how, how to add it to your own. Yeah, so I have just received a invitation on my email from Claire. So I'll go into this email and hopefully click on the right one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and I will view this invitation, which takes me to GitHub and I will accept that. And then here I can see the GitHub repository that I am now invited to. So for me to be able to then sort of edit with this, what I would do is I would go to this green button here um, and find this URL and I would copy this and clone this repository on my GitHub desktop. And to do that, what I would do is I would go to File and Clone Repository, and then just enter the URL there, and then make sure that I use a um, folder that hasn't been used before, or an empty folder. Ooh, what is this thing called? That is not correct. There we go. Oh dear. That's close enough. <laughs> no, okay. So I'm okay with that. And I'll select that folder and then I can click clone, at which point it does its little thing. Um, and so I will probably give it the screen back to Claire now so that she can. Don't you go back to the presentation so we can. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll take control again and yeah, cool. So, I feel like he works go, relatively well. <laughs> to the presentation. Yeah, so that has um, duplicated now, so you can see like the main branch and everything there. So, if we go back to the presentation, I'll hand back over to Claire. Request. Cool. Yay. Okay, so. We're going to have a look at the process of creating a branch and then we'll do it live. So basically your main branch, you make a start and you'll do a initial commit, which is uh, what we did at the beginning. We published the repository with a readme that's done, and then you can make as many commits as you want. But what we're going to be doing then is to create a new branch from that uh, main, main branch and make commits on that branch. We can make as many as we want independently from the main branch. And then once we are satisfied with the with what we've done and we think it's ready to be merged with the main branch, we'll do that. We'll do a merge. And something that can also be done is to make a branch from a branch, which can quickly become a bit tricky because then you want to merge that branch from the original branch and then bringing it back to the main branch. So that can create a lot. It can potentially create conflicts, which is something we're going to see uh, next. So um, something that is important to do is once you're done with the branch, you want to close it. So we don't have someone then making doing work on a branch that is not that is now obsolete. Um, so a live example. So 
we're going to go back to Megan. Oh, we already have Megan. Oh. Never mind. So yes. I'm going to stop, stop, stop control. And then yeah. um, she's going to be creating a branch. Okay, so I've just cloned the repository. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make sure that I pull all the data from that to make sure that I've got the most up to date version of the branch. So that I've just sort of fetched that now. So I can have a look at the file. No, I'm creating a branch. So um, no, I again, I just remembered I didn't put anything in the readme yet. So oh, OK. Then, it's on my it's on me. Now. I'm going to share. I'm going to share my okay. screen. So <laughs> we've got the oh. readme. We've got the readme into which um, we want to add something. Uh, so we are doing the readme, but technically, usually you will do that in code. Um, so I'm going to go into my repository. I'm going to open that readme. So mine is open with RStudio, but I know that um, you can also use other software. Megan, you use, um, what's the name of it? I forgot. Um, yeah, VS Code, but I think I yeah. I changed the default so that it would open in RStudio to oh, hopefully <laughs> reduce confusion. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be that. But I'm going to do the first change I'm going to make is um, I'm going to add some text. So this is from um, the GitHub help page about branching. So it's just for the sake of making a change uh, in the code. Uh, so I'm going to save that change. So there's two sections: section one, section two. This is changed. And then it should update. Yes, my dis my now my uh, GitHub has seen that I've made that change. So in green is what I've added. So I'm going to commit. I said that change. I'm going to commit it. Commit it to the main branch on my desktop. So it's not online yet. So to make it online, and so that um, Megan can also see it, I'm going to push to the origin. Yeah, and then if we check online and we refresh, we can see that my changes have been made. So now, that's now that Megan is going to make a change. So she's going to create a branch from that main and add some text. Yeah. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so now that the main has been updated, I'm going to refetch the origin to make sure I've got the most up-to-date version. So here you can see it saying that there's been one commit made. So I'm going to pull that down so that it comes onto my local desktop. And then I can open the repository in RStudio, hopefully. Technical fun. Maybe I'll just open it from here. That might be quicker. OK, and it opened in VS Code. That's fine. <laughs> so this is um, VS Code, for those of you that don't know. It's a similar thing to RStudio, but you can code in different languages, but that's irrelevant for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some additional. Did you create a branch? No, I did not. <laughs> ah. <laughs> It's but you can see that guys. <laughs> on my desktop, I do now have this latest version. OK, let's try that again. So <laughs> going to create a new branch. So for current purposes, I'm just going to call it my name. Um, but you would probably um, use something descriptive to describe the actual process that you're doing. So I have created this branch. And this branch is currently just on my desktop. So I have to publish this branch the online version. And then in theory, I should be able to come here to the online version and refresh. And you can see here that there are two branches. So we have the main branch and my new branch. So if I then go back to GitHub desktop, I can actually open the updated version on my branch. So and then what I can do here is I'm going to add a bit of extra text. 
because with the idea that we're collaborating on writing this page and Claire's done her bit, so I'm going to add my bit and we'll just close these pop-ups. And that has sort of done that. So I can click save on there. And then in theory, I should be able to go here and you can see all the text that I've added here. So I will just put in a note to say what I've done and commit it to the branch on my local computer. And then I'll push that to GitHub online. And then I think we are going back to the PowerPoint presentation. Should we do a oh, yeah, no. for this one first? <laughs> yeah. OK, so now that I've done that, part of then merging it is you need to create a pull request. So if I click on create pull request. This opens this up online. And basically, you can sort of see here that it's sort of saying that it's able to merge. Um, so if I create the pull request, it creates. It moves to this page where you can see um, the permits that in theory have been made. Um, but yeah, and so then I've requested this, that my branch gets merged with the main branch. So I think I'll hand it back over to Claire now so that she can show you yeah. accepting that. So if we go back to mine, I've received an email, technically, yeah, I've got an email telling me that uh, Megan has made a pull request uh, on the uh, repository. So if I go here and I refresh, you can see that in the pull request tab, there's now a number telling me that there's a pull request here. So it's basically the same as you can see. Um, it does say, I can have a look at, if I click, click on, uh, file itself I can see that she's added section three and section four and if I'm happy with it um, I can merge it it says that there's no conflict with the main branch so Megan branch and the main branch don't uh, contradict each other so I can click on merge pull request I can add uh, more comments if I want to uh, but I'm not going to for this exercise and I confirm merge and then, as I mentioned a bit earlier, um, it's safer than to delete the branch because now the branch and the main are exactly the same. And because we want to keep the main branch as the finalized and clean version, if we don't need that branch anymore, we will delete it. It's, it's very easy to create some more anyway. So we'll just delete the branch. And if we go back to the code, we can see that there's only one branch left, which is main. And sections three and section four have been added. Um, so now I'm going to go back to Megan and we're going to talk about what happens when there's a conflict. Yes. So, so when you're merging, sometimes you can have conflicts come up. And this basically happens when you have multiple merges together. Um, so coming from different branches. So if I made a branch and Claire made a branch and they had competing um, edits. This could lead to. Screen again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> it's really going well this afternoon. Okay, let's try that again. So we can, if I was to create a branch and Claire were to create a branch, but we both edited the same sort of file on the same line, and it had different content. If we then went to try and merge that to the main document, it could cause a conflict. So there we go. So as an example, if we have um, our main that has a note file that just says hello world and I were to create a new branch called edit that has currently duplicated the notes file. So then I've decided to add a to do list to the notes file that is to finish this edit. However, Whilst I've been doing that, Claire has added a to-do list to the main file that says um, create readme. And I have then gone to merge my commit. However, 
there's a conflict because the two files don't match. And so I'm staring at the screen slightly concerned, um, wondering what's gone wrong. And then it's a case of trying to resolve this conflict. So how do we do that? <laughs> so basically when you get a conflict, it will give you, um, it will show you the code and show you where this conflict is present. So it uses these little arrows um, next to the word head and some equal signs. And then below that, you can see um, the contents of the notes file from the main branch. And then there's some more arrows and um, an update branch that shows the um, different line that was in the text file that I edited. And the way to sort of resolve this conflict is relatively simple, depending on the example and the complexity of the conflict you have. But in this case, what you would do is you would look here and I, I could be like, oh, well, I've merged. I want to merge my edit. I've finished editing, so I don't actually need to have finished edit on this to do list. So I can delete that. And then you also want to delete the sort of additions that are put in there um, as part of the conflict resolution aspect. So the arrows, et cetera. And then this sort of leaves you with the final document and you click to resolve the conflict and you end up with your final updated version. And your code ends up looking perfect and everybody is happy again. So now I think we're going to attempt <laughs> to purposefully create a conflict so that we can show you a bit more of a live example. Okay, so to do this, I am going to go back to my GitHub desktop. And what I'll do first is I'm just going to delete the old branch that I made on my local desktop. Okay, so then what I'll do again is I'll fetch the origin of my main branch to make sure I have the most up-to-date version. And again, you can see all the commits that have been made since I last did anything. So I will pull that origin down. And wait for it to finish. Great, okay, so that's just fetched that for me. So then I can, again, open the file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the title of section four to just protected branches. Okay. Then I'm going to save that, except I did I create a new branch then? I don't think I did, did I? Do you not? No. Never mind. I'll push this to the main branch and your edit can be the conflict one. I think that should still work. Cool. Okay. So I will just I think you can just delete the, the the change. I think it will still work this way around. Hang on, because what I'm doing in the background needs to work out with what you're doing. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I will discard the change. <laughs> make a branch. <laughs> yes, and I'll make a branch. So, making a new branch, which I will call conflict. And I'll just put my initials there so we know that it my conflicting branch and I will publish that branch to github and then I will open the file and edit the file cool so we will just put the branches and we will save that and now that I've made that change, I will commit that to my branch and push that. Um, 
and then I will be creating a pull request. Okay. And then we go to me. Yes. Cool. So I should be able to again see there's a pull request from Megan. So I'm going to check it out. And it says there's a conflict there. That's because in the background, while she was making changes to section four, I also created a branch and made changes to section four. And then on my on my own, I just I was happy with it. So I merged it with um I merged it with the main uh branch. So now that the main branch is different from uh, the main branch that the branch that um, Megan is trying to 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 merge. So we are going to click on resolve the conflicts, and where this is highlighted in red, this is where uh, there's an issue. So Megan's has written protected branches in section four, while I've written working with protected branches in section four. So there's a little conflict here. So what we want to do is just delete whatever we want to want to keep. So for example, if I want to keep Megan's title, because it's a bit shorter, it's a bit snappier, I prefer it. I'll just remove everything. Everything that we don't want to keep in the code needs to be removed. We can see that the red highlights have been removed. And now we can click on mark as results. Go until you actually remove everything, this button will be grayed out and you won't be able to press. So you need to solve the conflict before you can resolve it. And then if we're happy with what we have, we will commit the merge. So now instead of saying that there's a conflict, there's no conflict because we've just resolved it. So we click again on uh, confirm the merge. We delete the branch now that it's sorted. And then if we go back to the code and we look at the title of section four, it says protected branches, which is the title that Megan had written and that we chose to keep. And that's it. We did it. <laughs> oh, well, um, so there are some sort of resources that could be useful if I can figure out how to share my screen. So. Oh, technology is not on my side today. Cool. So there's some sort of resources that you can sort of look at to help with this. So one is the sort of standard GitHub documentation, um, but there is also a using Git and GitHub with our online sort of book thing that is quite good and it sort of walks you through the different stages, including working with Git on the command line, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we have today we kind of whistled through that quite quickly <laughs> um so if there's anything that anyone would like us to maybe re go over let us know <laughs> or if you want to have, have a go, have a yeah. go yeah, on your own it says a catch a lift so it's just uh there's five people so yeah yeah don't know how we can't really pair each other but if anyone wanted to have a go we could try and do that Or if you're all happy and don't have any questions, including today, <laughs> then I guess we can wrap it up. But yeah, awful. That was really really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, it's really helpful too. Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I joined a bit later, but um, it, it was this recorded. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can see. yeah. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, it has also recorded the slight errors that we made throughout the podcast. <laughs> but save the prosperity. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, that's fine. So I'll try to catch up with the first uh, part and yeah, do a follow up because I have my GitHub account and all that. So I haven't used. <laughs> but yeah, okay. thank you. No worries. Cool. I'll just stop recording that actually.